God's purpose in your generation, you must develop outstanding skill. Do you see a man skilled in his work, skilled in his business? He will not serve the God of Strabe, he will serve the God King. It's having a passion for wisdom. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 5 to 7. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 5 to 7. This is a continuation of it's having a passion for wisdom which is God's original operating system. According to Psalm 104, verse 24. I said, it's having a passion for wisdom. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 5 to 7. Which is God's operating system. Psalms 104, verse 24. It's building great families. Proverbs 24, verse 3 to 5. Seven God's purpose in your generation has to do with building great families. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 3 to 5. It's becoming a seeker of God's will and work. A person who is a person who is becoming a seeker of God's will and work. Proverbs 25, verse 2 is to the glory of God to search out the blood and the glory of kings. It's becoming a speaker of God's will and plan. Actually, here you can even uh, Psalms, Psalms 73. Yes, you can add Psalms 73, verse 10 and 11. Psalm 33, verse 10 and 11. Let me read it so Psalms chapter 33, verse 10. The Lord was the plan of the nation and trust the purpose of the people. Listen to the verse. But the plan of the Lord stands forever. In the world of God in our hands, there are all the purposes of the creation of the new generation. Proverbs 25 and 2. Proverbs 25 and 2. The last one of Psalms 33, verse 10 and 11. It's seeking the kingdom of God. Matthew 3, Matthew 6, 33. It's seeking the kingdom of God. That's how you say God's work for senior generation. It's seeking the kingdom of God. It's seeking the kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. 
Continue writing. It's becoming sport to a generation. It's becoming sport to a generation. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. It's becoming It's living a life. No, no, sorry, before that one. It's becoming life with the generation. You are from right to becoming soul of a generation. Matthew 5 15. Then it's becoming a life with the generation. Matthew 5 14 and 15. Matthew chapter 5. Verse 14 and 15. When you step God's purpose to your generation, you give your life to that generation. God in a generation. It's living a life of honor. If we say somebody has served God's purpose in a generation, they have lived a life of honor. What have they done? They have honored God in that generation. So it's living a life of honor, honoring the hearts of God in a generation. It's living a heart of honor. Sorry, it's living a life of honor. Honoring the heart of God in a generation. Acts chapter 13, verse 22. Acts chapter 13, verse 22. And John chapter 14, verse 30 and 31. Acts chapter 13, verse 22. And John chapter 14, verse 30 and 31. Special 
purpose. To solve a specific problem. Now, based on your growth, based on your exposure, you can even amplify into other specifics as you grow and build to that specific problem. But all of us here, we were created, we were born, we are alive right now because there is something God wanted mercy to come and do. There is something God wanted Mr. Gatene to come and do. There is something God wanted Sam to come and do. There is something, there is a specific thing. To Jesus, it was to come and die and restore humanity to the kingdom and to dominion. Man lost it in Genesis chapter 3. Are you following me? And he came, said, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. He brought back what man lost and brought back now the actual way for man to be redeemed and restored so that he can now be in a kingdom. He says, He has made us. Give me who's on the rubber. Where is Ben? Give me if you can. Sorry for moving you, Abraham. Give me Revelation 5, verse 9 and 10. Revelation 5. You must see this. A lot of people don't know why they are saved. A lot of preachers are talking about salvation, new creation realities. They are talking about, oh, we have been reconciled. They don't know why. Listen to why. Why Jesus died. Can we read this together? One, two, three, let's go. The sun, a new song. You are worthy to take up the scroll and to open it. Why? Because you were slain and with your blood you purchased men for God from every tribe, language, people and now listen to me. This is the redemption plan. This is reconciliation. This is you becoming a new creature. This is Christ paying the price. This is Christ taking upon sin so that you might become the righteousness of God. This is you becoming a new creature in Christ. This is you being reconciled, restored, redeemed. But why? Give me the Look at why. Let's read this together. One, two, three, let's go. You have made them to be a kingdom and priest to serve our God and they will reign on earth. Anyone who teaches salvation who doesn't understand that, anyone who teaches new creation, reality, redemption, restoration, righteousness in Christ, they don't understand that. They are raising high people who can't dominate the group. They are raising people who have self-confidence that they are new creatures. They are not condemned. But for what? The purpose was you have made them to be a kingdom and priest to serve our God and they will Heaven is your home. 
As long as you are born again, you are reconnected back, you have access back to home. So it's not about home again. It's about our assignment why we were saved from home. Are you here because you're here? Because most people right now, the gospel of salvation is you must be saved.
if we can have small businesses have access to selling and having their products reached by little people, we can create industry. And he amplified small enterprises and created the largest shopping market for trading. Look at what Bill Gates did. Look at what Uncle Dakota is doing. Dakota doesn't come with anything. He comes in your country, finds the store, the line, everything is already there, and that sets up a plan. What is
we are all on the same page. Please take your seat. We, we started the meeting uh, before you, you arrived, and uh, one of the things that we are going to consider in going forward is how best we can ensure Pastor Manasseh goes to the universities 
or colleges. Now we are saying that that is a very good program for us to participate in or to get benefit from it. So we are going to leverage on that. We are going to share exactly how we are going to be uh, participating in that. This week we are spending time myself and uh, one or two of the men are putting together a proposal of how we intend to, to run with Wisdom 101. So we will share this at the end of the coming week so that everyone is aware. Number three is we want to be more relevant to our church and to our community. How do we serve our purpose in our own generation? One of the things that we know is that it is very difficult to serve your purpose when your finances are not right. So one of the things that we're going to do, we agree and uh, we were going to share with the pastors is that we're going to, uh, we've agreed to form a cooperative. So in the next few days or weeks, we're going to share the full information about it. Already there's, a, there's an idea, but uh, I won't go into it because of time. But uh, those are the three activities that we are starting with. After that, we want to hear what the branches are able to do because of your location. Maybe there's something else which is relevant that can be supported by gathering of white men. So that is what we have discussed today. We'll be sharing this information. We want to, 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 to disseminate information more. We want to communicate more. So that we don't know when things are happening. We want everything that's happening to be known by everyone and those that are willing to run with it, will run with it. Before you came, uh, those of you who just joined us, we were praying and uh, the appeal that Pastor Manasseh has made is very important for me to repeat. We are in a, we are in a time when the thing that we are trying to do, the thing that God has given us to do as a church and even as men is so big that the enemy is fighting it. Amen. So Pastor Manasseh has made an appeal that he has never made before. He has made an appeal, he said, pray for me. Pray for us. He says, please get into covenant to pray for the prophetess, for Pastor Manasseh and for his wife and family every day so that we can protect them. Because the enemy is fighting and when the enemy strikes the shepherd, the sheep will disperse. So if we know what is good for us, this is a big appeal which I'm repeating and I'm appealing to the men that uh, let us take it very seriously and pray for our leaders, pray for ourselves as well, pray for our gathering of wise men and pray for our churches, the branches and everything. And not only for the senior pastor, for even these senior pastors of the branches, because they are carrying the same uh, mandate and we strike the senior pastor of the branch, we dismantle the branch. So let us pray for everyone, let us pray for each other, let us uh, keep um, ourselves protected. Amen. In brief, that is what we have agreed. We are sorry that you came late and you just caught us at the end. We will try in the future to synchronize the way that we, we hold our meetings. Having said that, I will just ask you all uh, to just prepare an offering. One of the things we need to do is to build the finances for this uh, gathering appointment. 
will be transparent to make sure that everyone uh, what is happening with our finances. So just uh, prepare, prepare an offering and um, I will ask uh, one of the senior pastors, Pastor Nanachika, to pray for you and to, to release us. Amen. And Pastor Joel. Hallelujah. 